In 2021, many people in France received an unexpected and unusual email from Deliveroo. The email was a receipt for a food order they did not make. It was for 38 pizzas, totaling over 400 euros. It also came with 50 complimentary packets of hot sauce. After panicking a lot of customers, Deliveroo issued an apology. It wasn't hackers. It wasn't a system error. It was a prank. It was an April Fool's. April 1st, a day of pranks, jokes, and hoaxes. Its origins are debatable, but the noteworthy examples were only really afforded to those with social influence. Such as in 1856, British people were tricked with an invitation to see the annual ceremony of washing the lions. With instructions to gather at the white gate of the Tower of London, there was no white gate and there were no lions. We went to Tower Hill in the morning of the 1st of April to watch the result. I must confess, I for one was not prepared for the extraordinary credulity of the British public. They flocked up in their shoals to see the lions washed. No, oh, yes, I say, Reginald, those colourful fools are goofy R. But coupled with the internet now, that's a different beast. <coughs> You're not just pranking a handful of foolish Brits, you can now prank people all over the world. Or at the very least, make something a little unexpected. April Fool's Day is my favourite internet holiday. Like going through a stocking on Christmas morning, I'd go through the regular sites to find out what creative, subversive things people have made. I've joined in before, I once created my own version of Monkey Island. It was playable, albeit very, very short. However, the creator of Monkey Island, Ron Gilbert, hates April Fool's Day. And he's not alone. Can't they take a joke? Or are the jokes just not funny? April 2000. Anyone going onto Google were greeted with a spinning spiral gif called the Mentalplex Circle. It would then read your mind and show you the results. Doing so would lead to a random error message such as insufficient conviction. Please clap your hands three times whilst chanting I believe and try again. And brainwaves received in analog. Please rethink in digital. Google regularly takes part in April Fools such as the Google Gulp, searchable socks, and even com.google. This extends to their other services. In 2014, Google Maps teamed up with Pokemon to allow users to explore real-world maps and capture Pokemon. And John Hank, CEO of Niantic Labs, a former Google internal startup, said, Haha, <laughs> just kidding, unless... And it became the massively popular Pokemon Go. But Google aren't fooling anyone. YouTube, however, did trick people, as in April 2008, clicking on any of the featured videos led to... Oh. Oh. Now, this might seem like a pretty tired joke now, but in 2008, this was Rick Rolling at its peak. This was when Rick Rolling became mainstream, and it's been something of an April Fool's staple ever since. In 2013, YouTube teamed up with The Onion to claim that this whole time, YouTube had been a contest for the best video and the site would be shutting down whilst they decide on the winners. And then our Steam panel will select the best video, which will be announced when the website goes back online in 2023, featuring the winner of YouTube and nothing else. Huh, and what's today's date? Uh-oh. YouTube even went as far as to have a pair of hosts read out the first batch of best video nominees on a live stream non-stop for 12 hours. Buckethead plays Jordan on Expert 100%. These are all fine, but arguably Google's most notorious prank took place on Gmail. Gmail itself was launched on April 1st, 2004, leading many to think, a Google email? <laughs> Pull the other one, it's got an attachment. But it was a very real email service, and the hoax was, it wasn't actually a hoax. A double bluff. Much like this New Zealand April Fool's advert in 2015 where they say the first customer to trade their car will get a free BMW, it sounded too good to be true, but then someone took the bait and got a free car. Or Ron Gilbert, who again hates April Fool's Day, announcing a very real new Monkey Island game on April Fool's Day. Gmail has taken part in many pranks, including having emails in paper form sent in the mail and adding Morse code, but their most infamous prank came in April 2016 in a form of a Minions gif. This is the mic drop. And depending how you look at this, this was either a massively successful prank or an absolute disaster. The premise was, when writing an email, next to the send button was a bright yellow button saying, send and mic drop. 
This would send your email, but also attach this minion's GIF. What could go wrong? Given people use Gmail for work purposes, it only took one misclick to suddenly look grossly unprofessional. Gmail support page was flooded with comments of how this GIF had led to lost business and lost jobs. While it might seem clearly indicated, once the disclaimer is dismissed, it doesn't alert you again. And the mic drop is so close to the genuine send button, naturally many would hit it by mistake. But also, it had replaced the send and archive button. So many clicked on it out of habit. And yet, there's one more feature of this prank that severely backfired. It's a mic drop. A symbol of having the last word. In Gmail, the mic drop would not only send the funny GIF, but also close and mute the entire email thread. So if you send an email with a mic drop, even if you didn't mean to, any and all replies to that email will not go to your inbox. And there was no way to unblock it unless you were fast enough to click that undo button. Google pulled the plug on the prank early, citing a bug, and even stated in very few cases the mic drop would continue to appear in emails even when people hadn't pushed the button. Seems like the image of a minion wasn't much of a laughing matter. In 2018, Microsoft announced that they would not be taking part in any April Fools, possibly with this situation in mind. And in 2021, Google have cancelled April Fools plans for two years running, citing COVID. Is this the downward spiral for April Fools? Or will they be back in 2023 with the best video on YouTube or something else to surprise us? But probably not involving a GIF. April Fools is great publicity and this event certainly became newsworthy, but perhaps not in the way they meant. And this just in. In 1957, one of the UK's most highly respected news programs, Panorama, broadcast a three minute long segment about the spaghetti tree. For context, spaghetti wasn't as widely available as it is now, and it was considered to be a novelty and an exotic delicacy. But because the news show treated the subject just seriously enough that with an audience of about 8 million, this tricked a lot of people, many contacting the BBC asking how they can grow their own spaghetti tree. The advice they gave was to plant a sprig of spaghetti into some tomato sauce and hope for the best. This is widely regarded as the most successful April Fool's Day prank done by a news program. There's been similar trickery with news bulletins, such as the radio play of War of the Worlds, where Orson Welles described the alien invasion as a fictional news bulletin. But even though it began clearly as a play, if you tuned in late, it caused something of a panic. And the infamous BBC fake documentary Ghost Watch, framed as a live broadcast investigating ghost hauntings that seemed real, real enough to create fear, anger, and a lot of complaints. And this predates a lot of found footage horror like Blair Witch. These aren't April Fool's Day pranks, but it demonstrates how powerful our imagination can be when you blur the lines of fact and fiction, especially when you use news reporting as the format. But how does the news, who are generally meant to report the truth, handle April Fool's Day? In 2014, NPR posted on Facebook, what has become of our brains? Why doesn't America read anymore? This was met with a lot of angry comments, some who despair at the state of society, others offended, saying, um, actually, I read a lot of books, actually. People were furious, but those who actually read the article would see, we sometimes get the sense that people are commenting on NPR stories they haven't actually read. If you are reading this, please like the post and do not comment on it. Then let's see what people have to say about this story. A beautifully played April Fool's Day prank and with a kind of moral message behind it. Bravo, no notes. And therein lies the problem with news on the internet. The tendency is to just look at the headline and not dig into it any further and clickbait headlines can spread before the context can catch up. Like in 2009 when the Pirate Bay was acquired by Warner Brothers. It tricked many, despite being told, look at the date. I don't get it. What does the date have to do with anything? In 2016, China's state-run news agency, Xinhua, announced something of a ban on April Fool's Day as part of the country's tough measures against spreading misinformation. But they announced this April Fool's ban on April Fool's Day, leading many to not take this very seriously. And it's believed to be partly down to having been fooled by an Onion article calling Kim Jong-un the sexiest man alive, and even reported on a Virgin Airways plane with a glass bottom in 2013, which was, you guessed it, an April Fool's prank. But of course, plenty of news channels across the world have been pranked themselves with an April Fool's. That, oh my God.
God, stop with the Rick Rolls! <clears throat> In 2021, Volkswagen had a great idea for an April Fool's Day joke. To promote their electric cars, they would pretend to have rebranded the entire company from Volkswagen to Volkswagen. See what they did there? They dropped the K for a T. Clever stuff. So they wrote up a convincing sounding press release ready to go live on April Fool's Day. Except they accidentally published the press release publicly on March 29th. Once the news started breaking, naturally journalists had questions like, is this actually real? This is where the story should have ended. But Volkswagen were apparently so committed to the bit, this le epic prank, that they said, yes, it's real. They even post this name change announcement on Twitter. But then Volkswagen stock prices started to go up. And using misinformation to artificially inflate your stock prices? Well, that's a crime. Volkswagen had to come clean that it was all just a silly April Fool's joke. And it still wasn't April 1st yet. Journalists were hurt. Dear Volkswagen, <laughs> You lied to me! Unbelievable that a company that once had to pay $30 billion for lying has told a lie. This press release is full of lies. Look at this one. Founded in 1955? <coughs> no, it wasn't. It was founded in 1937. Go on. Look it up. Go look up how Volkswagen was founded. The problem with April Fools Online is that the internet is something of an eternal present. Everything is happening at the same time. Even if it happened in 2016, if you've just seen it, it's right now. When a TV show does an April Fools joke like Spaghetti Trees, it's limited to its time frame. It's controllable. But online, news can spread beyond that one day of the year. Futurism posted an April Fools of Pluto being reclassified as a planet. But then this article was republished by a different site several months later and with a key phrase removed. And then this news went viral in early 2018, well beyond its April Fool's Day context. And in this time where we can hear people still parroting fake news, it's hard to tell what's even a joke anymore. On April 1st, 1981, The Guardian ran a story claiming there are machines that can control the weather. Silly, harmless stuff. But in 2017... Bill Gates owns this. the weather machines. Let me... <sighs> How are you supposed to do parody when everything is already ridiculous? Many respond to April Fool's Day with protest. In 2019, r games closed its subreddit, not as a prank, but to highlight toxicity in the community they're trying to combat. Elsewhere on Reddit, r place ran a art project on April 1st, 2017, where users collaborated on the same canvas, but each person could only change one single pixel at a time every 5 to 20 minutes. Over 1 million users worked together over 3 days, with the final result coming to represent internet culture as a whole. And this was repeated on April Fool's Day 2022. And also T-Mobile ran a charity campaign in 2020 and 2021 called Give Thanks Not Pranks to spread positivity instead of pranks. I've got my issues with charity campaigns that are we have a big pile of cash but we won't donate it all unless you tweet a hashtag kind of strategy, but ah, whatever. But why is there protest? Why don't people like April Fools? We've seen how jokes can wildly backfire or cause outrage or misinformation, but is there more going on? It's possibly just fatigue, especially with the just a prank bro YouTubers. <laughs> In 2019, the LeBrant family staged a prank for a YouTube video where they convinced their six-year-old daughter that they would be giving away her pet dog, filming her crying the whole time. I've also got my issues with YouTube family channels, so fuck this. This is awful. Celebrities love doing fake pregnancy announcements. It's lazy, predictable, and they're never funny. In 2019, Justin Bieber did the same and even doubled down. But when people in the comments were like, hey, with miscarriages and infertility, pregnancy isn't something to joke about. He gave a half-assed apology, hashtag Dennis the Menace, and then followed up with an ultrasound of a puppy. So yeah, maybe people just suck at April Fools. It's possible for many, such as those with autism, April Fools is a minefield for toyed expectations. I spoke to video game journalist Laura Kate Dale about this. I know I am a naturally gullible person. The world has to be put on hold for a bit because we're in we're in the weird joke day. <laughs> uh, I think it must have been about 2007 and it was when IGN 
IGN put together a very elaborate trailer for a live action Legend of Zelda movie. Yes. And I was not a particularly internet connected person at the time. And that one really stuck with me in that I really remember how excited I got about it and how much I like went to tell my friends about it. And then had that rug pull moment of, oh, you're so stupid for having <laughs> fallen for this. And it's the, the one two gut punch of how uh, you're foolish for having fallen for it. Plus that thing you were really excited about doesn't actually exist. That wasn't a fun feeling. So many are fed up with empty promises, but what if the April Fool's prank became not a prank? Think Geek regularly turned some of their fake April Fool's products into real products, like 2009's Torn Torn Sleeping Bag. But then were they always just real products they were gauging reactions for? In 2012, Adblock made a working version that instead of blocking ads, it would replace them with lolcats. It was only meant to exist for the April Fools, but it proved to be so popular it was kept and eventually went open source so it can remain online. In 2006, gambling site Paddy Power announced a strip poker tournament. Despite being an April Fools joke, there was enough genuine interest that a few months later, a very real strip poker tournament was held with the prize money going to charity and even getting a world record in the process. Why are people more on board with these kinds of April Fool jokes and not others? Maybe people just enjoy them more when the joke is not attempting to trick, deceive or obstruct the viewer, but instead wearing on the joke too. Like Burger King's Chocolate Whopper in 2018 and McDonald's Milkshake Sauce Pots in 2019, people didn't believe they were real, but they wished it was real. Whether it's Lego Smart Bricks, Cowbell Hero or Echo the Dolphin but with guns, we're not supposed to think they're actual products. Everyone's familiar with April Fool, so it's not a surprise anymore, but I've never been unsuspecting of this stuff. I'm more fascinated in the inventive ways these sites approach April Fools. And the fact that the actual brands behind them are getting involved in making these, yeah, it can be overly corporate with free promotion. Silence brand! But done right? It's fun and creative. I'm fine with this. I think the brands that recognize the goal is not to mislead, but is to have fun on a day where you're sort of allowed to play in that space, I think tend to come across less, less out of touch. But maybe actual pranks can be done in such a way that may still be unexpected and create some confusion, but it's largely harmless and the sheer absurd scale of it reveals its true nature. In 1997, there was the great comic strip Switcheroonie, where a bunch of newspaper comic strip artists swapped comics for the day. So in a similar vein, in 2016, Alex Norris from those Oh No comics organized a bunch of webcomic artists to release comics with the exact same joke, with the punchline, maybe I am the fool. Then in 2019, webcomic artists coordinated again, this time to include hyper-realistic eyes called hashtag I am the fool. Then again in 2021 with long noodle arms called hashtag I arm the fool. Another webcomic, XKCD, often does very techy April Fool's, such as this 3D version. Adult Swim goes all out on pranks like Adult Swim Junior and Bush World Adventures. We're gonna go get me cube. And sometimes it would invade other shows, like 2022's Learning with Pibby, which would cause glitches and corruptions to anything playing that night. Or the far more simple, but nevertheless very funny, recurring gag they did in 2006. He's a big name terrorist who's only hit summit meetings of the developed nation so far. And Pornhub, a website I've never heard of before, rebranded themselves to be Cornhub. April Fool's Day is divisive. Yeah, offline pranks around the home or the office can be eye-rolling. <coughs> but personally, I love the weirder and more creative stuff you get online. I even love some of the deceptive stuff, but with a history of poor execution, bad joke tellers, mean-spirited pranks, and some extremely convincing hoaxes, it's no wonder many would rather skip the day. However you feel about it, I think April Fools on the internet is a good lesson about consuming information. Especially in this era of increasing AI and deep fakes, it's useful to have an annual reminder to not always take things at face value and to be a little careful with what you hear on the internet on April 1st and any other day of the year. After all, no one wants to be the April f Don't worry, I saved you from yet another Rickroll.
But you know what isn't an April Fool's? Headache is now on Nebula, who are the sponsors of this video. Nebula is a video streaming platform full of your favorite creators. It's creator made and creator owned. So by simply signing up, it directly supports me and creators like me. And with exclusive originals, bonus content and no ads, there's no YouTube algorithm to worry about. Like Philosophy Choose Play, The Prince, where a live recording is available to watch only on Nebula. All of my video essays will be on Nebula completely ad free and as for some of the older videos we've been adding some brand new epilogues to address mistakes or new information that has happened since the original upload that intro did not age well if you sign up using the link below you'll get nebula plus nebula classes a bonus feature to learn some new skills from creators so if you're an aspiring creator or just want to learn something new you get access to that just by signing up to nebula so get nebula using the link in the description and get 40 percent off an annual subscription and if that's not incentive enough the nebula a version of this video has me singing the Rick Roll uninterrupted. Do with this information what you will. And don't worry, I'm not leaving YouTube. I'm just going to be uploading videos onto Nebula as well. <laughs> Thank you to Laura K. Dale for speaking to me. And special shout out to this month's patrons, including Jace Lynn, Ashley Kinder, Trey Brock, Sloan Schoolcraft, Vinny Vex, Double X Studios, Drifter Wolf, Beamer Tectonic, Molel Kasemi, Oliver the Bi, Setsune Wave, Eustace Jack, Louis Wilde, James Owen, Nathan Chowie Nati, Matthew Smith, Joel Jennings, Alex Weston, Clam Wamsley, and Brett Halford. And if you'd like to support me, then please consider doing so on Patreon.